In July of 2014, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the president of the UAE, publicly announced the creation of a national space agency called the United Arab Emirates Space Agency. Sheikh Khalifa would go on to discuss the country's goal to put a probe around Mars by 2021, which marked the 50th year anniversary of independence from Britain. At the time, this announcement wasn't taken that seriously. While it was awesome that more countries were entering the space industry and that they had massive goals, it seemed impossible for a brand new space agency to reach Mars within seven years. Yet, against all odds, the UAE put their probe into orbit around Mars on February 9th, 2021. So here's how the UAE not only nailed their first Martian mission, but how they did it on time. Taking a look back, the UAE first proposed creating a space agency back in 2008. They weren't looking to do it by themselves though. They knew that they were a rather small country entering the industry much later than everyone else. So they were looking to form a conglomerate space agency, similar to the European Space Agency called the Pan-Arab Space Agency. However, their proposal to create the conglomerate space agency was rejected. Apparently, a couple of Middle Eastern countries already had an unofficial space conglomeration. So it didn't make sense to create a new one. After learning about this, the UAE decided to support the unofficial agency, pushing to make it official at the 2009 Global Space Technology Forum. Despite the push though, nothing would really happen over the next couple of years. Given the complacency from the other countries, the UAE would decide to just make their own space agency in 2014. After all, having a national space agency was far better than endlessly trying to create a conglomerate space agency. Since they couldn't form a partnership with their neighbors though, the UAE would turn around and form partnerships with the French and UK space agencies in 2015. These European space powers were far more advanced than the UAE. But to say that the UAE didn't bring anything to the table wouldn't exactly be true. You see, the UAE had actually launched seven satellites before creating a national space agency. The first three of these satellites were mobile communication satellites built by Boeing in the early 2000s. These satellites were called Thuraya 1, 2, and 3, and they were launched in October of 2000, June of 2003, and January of 2008 respectively. The next two satellites were built by the European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company, which is basically just Airbus's Defense and Space Division. These satellites were called Alya 1 and Alya 2, and they were launched in April of 2011 and April of 2012 respectively. Moving on to the last two satellites, Unlike the first two sets which were basically fully built by Airbus and Boeing, these two had more involvement from the UAE themselves. The Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center would send engineers to South Korea and together they designed and built Dubai Sat 1 and Dubai Sat 2. These two satellites would end up launching in July of 2009 and November of 2013 respectively. So as you can see, though the UAE wasn't a space power by any means, they did have a bit of experience designing, building, and launching satellites. Anyway, going back to the United Arab Emirates Space Agency, after they were founded in 2014, they would undertake five main initiatives, starting with the all Line Space Science Research Center. This initiative is pretty straightforward. As the name suggests, they do research and development for upcoming Emirati space missions. Aside from that, they're also responsible for forming partnerships with foreign space powers. Their second initiative was creating a strong educational program that would produce bright aerospace engineers and rocket scientists. In May of 2015, Alya Satellite Communications Company, the Mosdar Institute of Science and Technology, and Orbital ATK Inc. signed a memorandum of understanding. This was basically just an agreement that all three of these organizations would teach and utilize the same set of knowledge and skills. This would ensure a level of consistency between the organizations and streamline the process of switching from academia to the workforce. This agreement also created a brand new degree program in advanced space science, which was the first of its kind in the Middle East. Moving on, their third initiative was the Emirates Mars mission, and this is what we hinted at at the beginning of the video. The responsibility of designing and building the Mars Hope probe was given to Dubai, or more specifically, the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, who is the ruler of Dubai and the leader of the Space Center, would turn to the Americans for some help. This mainly consisted of a couple of universities, including the University of Colorado Boulder, Arizona State University, and the University of California at Berkeley. Dubai also seeked help from India, as they had just successfully completed their own Mars orbiter mission called Mangalyaan 1 for a record low cost of $74 million. With the help of India and a couple of American universities, Dubai started development of their HOPE probe, 
They first showed off a prototype at the Dubai Air Show in November of 2017. At the time, the project manager said that they were still on track to launch in July of 2020. But given that the prototype was still in the early stages of development, skeptics weren't quite convinced. Nonetheless, Dubai would successfully finish construction of the space probe in Boulder, Colorado, and the probe would be transported to its launch site in Japan in April of 2020. Despite constraints due to the pandemic, the spacecraft would successfully be launched in July of 2020 and reach Mars in February of 2021. Clearly, the Emiratis were not messing around, and this success garnered international interest as to what the UAE will do next. And that brings us into the UAE's fourth initiative, which is the Emirates Lunar Mission. This mission is actually extremely new and was just announced in September of 2020. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid outlined that the goal of the program is to send a rover named Rashid to the moon in 2024. The rover will be designed to study the thermal properties of the lunar surface and analyze the composition of lunar dust in microscopic detail. This project is also being led by the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center, and the Sheikh hopes that this project will allow the UAE to subsequently send a rover to Mars. If the UAE successfully completes this mission, they would become the fourth country to operate a rover on the lunar surface. That is, unless India beats them to the moon. Anyway, moving on to the country's final space initiative, we have space tourism. The UAE doesn't have launch capability, nor do they plan to develop launch capability anytime soon. But the UAE has been a large supporter of Virgin Galactic from very early on. In 2009, Abu Dhabi invested $280 million into Virgin Galactic for a 32% stake in the company. And the UAE hopes to provide space tourism with the help of Virgin Galactic. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't have a very positive opinion on Virgin Galactic, as they have been working on space tourism for ages at this point. But Virgin Galactic did just complete their first human spaceflight in late May, and there are rumors floating around that Richard Branson is trying to beat Jeff Bezos to space. So after all these years, Virgin Galactic is finally on the home stretch of launching commercial space tourism. Once all the final safety checks are completed, the UAE hopes to provide space tourism from their all-line airport using the spaceship too. The UAE is already a mega hub within the airline world as they own both Emirates and Etihad. So hopefully, they'll be able to transition their airline success into space as well. All of that is great and all, but that still leaves a question. How was Dubai able to nail Mars on their first try while also sticking to their timeline? Well, this success can be explained by a couple of notable factors, starting with launch capability. The hardest and longest part of launching a satellite or probe is developing and building the rocket itself. But the UAE was able to completely skip this step by relying on commercial launch providers. In their opinion, developing new rockets that don't push the envelope like Starship is rather unproductive. If you're not going to develop new advanced rocket technology, it makes more sense to just rely on commercial launch providers instead of making a Me Too rocket. And the UAE has fully embraced this perspective. Aside from relying on commercial launch providers, the UAE has also had no problem in forming international partnerships and reaching out for help. As we discussed, the UAE has received help from a handful of universities, Boeing, Airbus, Korea, India, the UK, and France. By seeking out the help of more experienced players, the UAE was able to heavily cut back on trial and error. Another major advantage the UAE has is their super young workforce. The average age of an engineer working at the space agency is just 27 years old. And a young workforce is generally much more enthusiastic and ambitious about the future, as they have much more to look forward to. During the Apollo days, the average engineer at NASA was only 28 years old, so quite similar. Since then though, the average age of a NASA engineer has bloomed to 45.8 years old, and that may be one of the key reasons for NASA's lack of momentum in recent years. At the same time, a young workforce may suffer from a lack of experience. However, the UAE's plethora of partnerships with experienced institutions largely compensates for that. So, the UAE not only benefits from youth and ambition, but also experience. But more than all of this, there's one key factor driving forward the UAE space effort, and that's survival. Over the past few decades, the UAE has heavily focused on diversification and sustainability. You see, the UAE, and more specifically Abu Dhabi, has historically been heavily dependent on oil. And having all of your eggs in one basket is not a good idea by any means. This is why the UAE has been investing so heavily into tourism, travel, and business. The space agency is just the latest addition to this diversification effort. 
Now, it's not like the UAE would go bankrupt without the space agency or anything like that, but space is an easy way to continue building the country's reputation and attracting more people to the country. People already think of the UAE as a leader in hospitality and tourism, thanks to their outstanding airlines, hotels, and shopping centers. Wouldn't it be awesome if people also thought of the UAE as an innovative leader as well? The UAE government definitely thinks so, and this has motivated them to fully support the agency in terms of both finance and regulation. In fact, the UAE has already invested $5.2 billion into their space agency. This is in stark contrast to the US, where getting approval from Congress and the FAA takes forever. Full support from the UAE government has already done wonders for the country's airline and tourism programs. Maybe the space program is next. Do you guys think the UAE will become a space leader? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you look forward to seeing more countries fully embrace space. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.